Hi everyone. Hi, welcome, welcome to part three of the uh, Trumpeter 148 scale uh, U-boat build from Ted here at eModels, eModels.co.uk. Once again, that's that's them down there. Uh, and in this section, we're going to have a look at the uh, the next compartment, as um, Trumpeter call it in the uh, colour callout. They call it the front soldiers living room front soldiers living room it's probably the literal translation from the english german uh, whichever way they've done it uh, but to me it appears that um, it's the officers uh, sleeping quarters um, there's a, a single bed uh, come on have a look at the plan uh, there's a single bed in here which uh, and a desk uh, which I assume is for the the captain uh, and then a couple of just double bunks single double bunks uh, for the what I would think is the second in command the senior engineer and such like that opposite them is the uh, radio and the sonar room um, and also we have uh, the toilet uh, now as far as I can see on the plan uh, this is the only toilet on the boat. Uh, obviously we're only seeing one side of the submarine because bits have been cut away for the uh, the see-through bit. So there may have been another toilet on another side of the boat uh, and we just don't see it because it's been cut away. So this is the toilet, otherwise known um, in the naval terms as the heads. Heaven knows why they call it the heads. Anyway, um, let's go back and... I'll show you what I've been doing. What I've had, what I've, because there are so many different colours in the uh, front soldiers' living room. Yeah. Uh, because there are so many different sort of parts to the uh, the, the 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 officers' quarters, um, I couldn't work out what I needed to paint uh, and what was going to be left for the last uh, because there's there's quite a few bits. Um, in this in this section uh, I, I, yeah sorry about moving scenes let's go back and we'll talk about this uh, what we've got in here we've got uh, a table which is uh, I think green uh, and then we've got all this works around here the offices uh, I'm just trying to get it so you can see it it's just because it's dark it's probably not coming through on the video quite well um, We've got the, the the two little compartments here, the, the radio room and the sonar room. And there's all lots of um, little bits of equipment all uh, bolted to the bulkhead and on the desk. Um, there's also lots of parts on the, on the main uh, watertight bulkheads themselves. Then we're coming across to all the woodwork. Uh, that's all around here uh, there's lockers to be put up um, and then it changes color again down in the heads um, for the uh, the actual toilet the, the ball itself that's different color um, and the bulkheads and then become all different colors again and of course uh, the deck um, we'll be pro probably following the theme right through the ball and we'll do uh, a similar colored deck uh, right the way right the way through um, but uh, yeah here we are here's the other side of it this is looking at it from the other way if, uh, sorry the reflection of the the lights just uh, keeping you from really seeing what's going on uh, but you can see around here all the equipment that I've just spoke about uh, the desk this desk here has just been taken away I think just to aid a bit of clarity there's a stool as well uh, there's bulkheads for the radio compartment and sonar compartment um, talk about the radio compartment one thing uh, I have found that's missing uh, from this submarine uh, from the radio room that's this one one thing that's missing is an enigma uh, I can't find on the plans anywhere an enigma machine um, I would have thought that would have been sort of uh, at least represented somehow uh, maybe I'll make a, a closed wooden box or something like that. I don't think I've got the, even I don't think I've got the skills uh, to make an Enigma machine. Um, uh, and another thing that um, has been uh, 
or has arrived recently for this uh, submarine build. Uh, something that I'm quite uh, excited about. Uh, came through the post the other day, it was this um, little box. Just came through the package. Um, since the last um, video that you saw when we made the torpedo room, uh, I finally made the decision and I decided it was time to get in touch with my uh, uh, lighting uh, magician. Uh, the, uh, the maker of all things wonderful and lighting, uh, I got in touch with Jennifer over at uh, JS Miniatures and uh, I got her to put myself, her, I got her uh, to put me together a, a package of uh, lights. Now let's have a look at what's in the box. Right. Uh, small scale lights uh, by JS Miniatures. Uh, lovely lady, Jennifer Smith. Um, and she has sent me, what I've asked for is, um, I've counted up um, all the lights throughout the board. And we can see some here, just represented in the uh, officer's quarters. There's three in the, in the deck head on the pressure hull. There's three in there and I've counted them all through throughout the board. And I think it comes to around about 20 um, actual lamps themselves. Now I didn't want these lamps to be, uh, or these this lighting to be too obtrusive uh, because I wanted it sort of hidden away so that it didn't detract from the vessel and the detail itself. But I wanted enough light in there to give it uh, that proper, uh, proper feel. So I had some discussions with her and we decided what, we, what would probably be best to fit were some nano chip LEDs. Uh, nano chip, or some people may refer to them as SMDs, uh, surface mounted diodes. Oh, that's a bit of a flash off the, the camera there. Uh, these have had a resistor added to them to make them a 6 volt so that we can uh, run it off a 6 volt battery pack. Um, that's going to give us enough power uh, and the, the voltage, the batteries will last a lot longer if the vest, if when the vessel's on display with its lights on. Uh, otherwise you could run them straight without the resistors you could run them straight off uh, 3 volts uh, now then uh, it's amazing since my days of building um, radio control boards when all we had was um, grain of wheat bulbs which uh, by today's standards as you'll see in a moment uh, were huge now these are infinitely tiny see how big they are on there that there is the LED chip all on the all on there now I asked Jennifer uh, if we could sort of represent the um, tungsten filament type lamps or the ordinary bulb you remember the glass round bulb that you uh, used to get which are being phased out at the moment um, and we came up with the uh, best way to represent that we think would be to have these in warm white not white not a stark white but uh, a warm white so it gives a yellowy sort of hint uh, to the vessel and uh, these do give for the size of them uh, I can just wire this one up temporarily uh, just, just by a matter of twisting together now when you when you're putting your lighting together on a model, don't need to be frightened of it because you're only working with battery voltages, uh, 6 volt at the most. Um, if you're running the mains, um, if you're running from the mains, you'd probably go through a transformer, something like that, which will bring the voltage down. Uh, there's no heat in these LEDs, uh, so they're quite safe to use in your model. And the last almost a lifetime right I've connected that up to the battery box and uh, by the powers of magic there it's quite bright on the on the video it comes across quite bright um, but once it's in the boat and what I'm going to try and do is actually hide them behind the original light fittings so you won't actually see uh, the chip itself even when it's lit. It'll give that light off but it won't be seen when it's lit. So I'll be doing that. Um, right, and I could turn that off now. I love that. It's brilliant. Right, turn that off. 
to save some of its lifetime. So there's a, there's a package there. I've also ordered, uh, this is the first batch. Um, there's another batch coming which is still on order uh, because what I'm going to do in the control room uh, is have the lights so that I can switch them from white to red and then back again. So it's action stations, uh, rig for red, red lights will come on, uh, add just a toggle switch, toggle them over to red, just adds a bit of uh, fun to the build really. Uh, right, so uh, as I was saying, uh, I've got all the bits for the uh, officers quarters cut out now and I've just dry fit and assembled it because I wanted to find out, I wanted to glue uh, the um, lockers in and the bunks in uh, just to find out what colours were what because I didn't I wanted to know that uh, once I get my airbrush out get the paint in it start brushing that I'm going to cover everything at once in the same colour that I need it to uh, because you know how it is you get all your painting done put your airbrush away clean it up put your airbrush away and you find a bit on the bench that you haven't painted so that's the reason why at the moment this is all just dry fit and we'll look at getting all this together. So I'm going to take this across to the spray booth now and just give it a, just paint it all up so we can get on with the job. Uh, right, uh, so we'll do that. I'll go across to the spray booth, get some things painted. Um, I'll find out all the bits and pieces because there's quite a bit to do in this compartment. Oh, we've done all these. Uh, that's not that going together. We've got all the uh, radios and everything to make and there's quite a few decals to go in as well. There's all this, all these decals to go in. So we've got quite a bit of work. There's some more decals there. So we've got quite a bit of work to do in this uh, compartment. So uh, let's talking, let's go do some doing. See you in a moment. Okay, that's us back from the spray booth. Um, just a little bit boring just to watch me spraying paint. Um, you'll have seen that on other videos as well. Um, right, uh, that's so that's all the uh, painting done. Uh, I'm just going to put this to one side and uh, let it sort of cure for a bit. Let it cure maybe overnight. I'll just put that out the way. Um, so the next thing, I did promise in the last video that I would um, try and show you a little bit of figure painting. Now there's there's 22 crew in this submarine um, so that's going to take sort of uh, some practice on figure painting. I'm, I'm not the best of it but I'll give it a go. Um, it's an experiment as uh, for much uh, for uh, me as much as it is for you. Um, so we'll have a look. Uh, we'll get one of the figures out and we'll have a go. So over to the workbench and we'll see you there. All right. Uh, if you can see, apart from the glare on that, uh, let's see the tubes. What I'm going to paint these with is the uh, Life Color um, diorama set, flesh paint. Uh, this contains uh, four colors inside, four pots of paint, um, two shadows, two bases, um, highlights, flesh light. Flesh base, flesh shadow, shadow, and flesh base. Um, I've sort of had a look around the tubes and uh, ideas and things, and everybody seems to have uh, their own um, sort of way of doing things. Um, what we're about to do um, is a one-off for me on camera, uh, and I'm going to try and paint um, this figure here. You can see him there. He's one of the torpedo crew. I'll fetch you up to see if you see him a little bit better. The the lighting for this isn't going to be brilliant. I'm going to try it anyway. If it doesn't work, um, I might post some pictures of the um, series of painting steps at the end of the video. Uh, but um, I've done this guy. This is the same guy because there's two of them in a kit. And what I've done with this one, I've given this a coat of uh, number two flesh base. First of all, I primed it in um, Ultimate Primer. I've, I primed it in black. Put that one out of the way because we're not talking about that one. Uh, I primed it in black and then I've given the skin, because uh, he's wearing his uh, trousers without a shirt, 
Uh, I've given the skin a coat of number two flesh base uh, from this set. Um, now I'm going to give it a thin wash uh, coat of paint. I've thinned the paint right down uh, and that's picked up the highlights in his abs, um, uh, the shadows in his abs and also in the creases of his arms. I've let the paint go a little bit thicker uh, so that uh, when we put the, the next wash on uh, which will be uh, the flesh base, no flesh, we've done the base Can't remember which one it is. Flesh base. When we put that on, uh, we could put that on with a, a light wash and um, hopefully it will pick it up now. The colours are picking up like hell on here. Uh, let's get my other mat. Sorry, I've had this painting mat out. And hopefully, there we go, this will improve things. That's better colours are a little bit better then it doesn't bounce my uh, colour balance around on the camera um, so there he is see it flashes all the time I need to sort this out or get another camera for this close-up work uh, the colours are a little bit different they, they're looking a little bit different in the film to what they are in real life but the abs are all uh, the shadow in the abs are picked out and the next thing we're going to do is try and paint so what we're going to do for this, uh, some water, bowl of water, paint palette, that's the paint I uh, put on first, uh, a set of brushes, um, there's quite a bit of paint to go on so we will need uh, a larger brush uh, to get it all over his body, um, some smaller brushes just to get the extra details in and some fine, I've got some fine detail brushes here, you can see, see those. Uh, we may not use them all. Um, well, when you're figure painting, it's probably best not to use really tiny brushes. Uh, the ones that have got like two or three hairs in them, uh, because um, they just don't seem to hold enough paint. Well, well I think of anyway. Right, I'm going to try and do this. So what we're going to do, give this a good shake. Now then, what we're going to do here is like um, a wet blend. I'll try uh, and do a little technique that I've been looking up on. So we're going to take our large brush and we'll put a drop of paint just to one side of the paint palette. Okay. Now then, let's see if this works. I'm going to take some water. Um, what I've got here, I've actually got tap water. Um, I've got some water uh, that you use for car batteries and irons, steam irons. Um, maybe some bottled drinking water you do as well. Um, just something that takes the impurities out, really. Right, what we're going to do now, we're not going to put the water on the paint, but we're going to put the water next to the paint. And we're going to build up a little puddle. There we go. And then we're going to just drag the paint into the water. So we're really, really thinning it down. I'm hoping this is going to work. Then taking a kitchen towel. What we're going to do now is at the end of the paintbrush of the ferrule is just touch that on there and that will take most of the water out of the brush leaving us hopefully with just pigment. So we'll go back to our guy. Now hopefully this works. What we're going to try and do is give it a wash but leave the highlights Oh, sorry, leave the shadows on his body. Now, because it's only very thin, it's going to take us, take me, a little bit of time to get his body done. 
uh, because we want to build it up slowly. So that we don't lose some of the detail that we've already put on. Now what I have got here as well are the feet of my feet underneath the bench is a fan heater. Heats the workshop. But I also find it ideal for drying these figures off. So I'll just turn it on. Uh, if you can hear it, I'm to, I apologise. Uh, so I'll just let that warm up a little bit. Now the darker base has also gone into his eye sockets and his mouth. We're not trying to cover them because that will give us the shadow into his eyes. We won't be painting his eyes as such because on this scale 148 it's really too small a scale to pick out uh, eyes. If you think if uh, what he must be, if he was in real life, if he was a guy stood what 20-30 feet away, oh sorry he's not in shot, if he was a guy stood in 20-30 feet away in real life You'd see his figure, but you wouldn't see the colour of his eyes as such. So I'll just dry that off. Sorry, it's not in shot, but I'm still here. You can do it with a hairdryer. Just um, blows the paint off a little bit. Uh, not blow, uh, just flashes the paint off a little bit. And already, I don't know if it's visible to you, already he's starting to change colour at all. He's lightening up. So remember, just pick up the pigments in the water. Take the water off the brush. And then just wet blend the colours. Right, this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'll uh, go and get this coat on. And then hopefully when you come back we'll have this coat on and we can look at doing some highlights. Alright, see? See he's changing colour ever so slightly. Uh, but we can put the colours on, put the, keep putting the thin coats on, build it up. It does take a little bit of time. There are probably quicker ways of doing this. Um, yeah, you could go ahead and just paint them in the one base colour. Uh, these guys are quite small and being in the submarine. Uh, we're not going to see them that much, but it's uh, an exercise in figure painting. Right, I'll go and get this um, flesh coat on, this flesh base, and uh, I'll come back for the next bit in a moment. All right. Okay, so here you are back. Um, I've continued painting for this. Come and have a look. I've continued painting this and giving it um, a few uh, more washes of the coat and you can actually see he is changing colour. Uh, as you can see from there was the original base colour and you can see how he has changed his colour, the skin tones changed a little bit. Now what we're going to do now is uh, put some highlights on. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. It's really difficult for me to show you on this sort of scale uh, what we're going to do but I'm going to use, where's the box gone? Uh, I'm going to use a flesh, um, number one flesh light and what I'm going to do is pick out 
I'm going to pick out the detail in his face. Uh, just pick out the bridge of his nose, uh, his cheeks, uh, maybe the edge of his chin, just in there. Just the chin. Uh, and maybe I'll pick up some sort of highlight just on top of his chest, over his shoulders, and maybe just sort of the light in the submarine is going to come down from above him. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight some of those and then continue uh, with the, the wash. Oops, I dropped him, nearly, nearly put him in the water. Uh, and then I'm going to continue the wash again and finish him off and bring him all around. Now you maybe notice that the paint has gone all over him. Um, normally I would probably paint the heads separate to the body. Uh, but because this guy has his shirt off, um, I'm, I want to get the skin tones all the same colour. And hopefully that way uh, he won't have a different coloured body to his head. Uh, give me a minute, I'll see if I can readjust this camera. There, I've got the camera in a little bit better now. Hopefully you can see a little bit more about what's going on. Um, he doesn't focus down too well, but you can see the sort of detail in his face. Now these ain't the best of figures. Um, I guess maybe uh, Trumpeter have got some uh, body else to do the figures. Considering the quality of the kit, uh, the figures ain't the best sculpting, but they'll do. Um, there are obviously other figures and heads out there. Um, to replace the parts, but um, with 22 figures, um, it ain't going to be too cheap uh, to replace everything. Right, which colour are we going to use? Right, I've got this. Uh, once again, I've still got my uh, palette here. Just taking some drops out. I'm not really going to use the um, wet blend here um, because we want to get this colour on uh, just as a, as a thick. Now a nice thin brush uh, to you to get across his bridge of his nose. Use the edge of the brush. Don't get the point of it. Just brush it along there. You see it. It is. Hopefully picking that up and just touch across his eyebrows. Don't worry if you get too much. Sorry, I have to turn him round so I can get the other side. A bit more paint on. His chin. Now this guy has uh, a bit of a f five o'clock shadow. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, beard growth on him and you could pick that up uh, at the final touch. Just a little touch across his chest. Just across the top of his chest. And shoulders. You can obviously, in the kit, the uh, in the uh, life colour set, there's obviously a number of colours uh, that by doing different bases, uh, different uh, different colours of the bases, uh, maybe even a different undercoat other than the, uh, a different primer other than the black, uh, you can create all manner of differing skin tones. Now just across the tops of his arms, just blending that down, just while it's still wet. One thing with acrylics is they do dry a little bit fast. Um, just to, um, doesn't help with the blending too well. Uh, just so we don't have any sharp edges of the paint, we can just blend it, blend it out. Oh, we can't see it. I've, uh, just across the top of his nose again. His cheeks. 
Just a touch on his cheeks. And we see that his, even in the little that you can see, he's getting a little bit more definition to him. It's just reflecting a little bit at the moment because it's still wet, the paint's still wet. Uh, but we can dry that off. Right, let's dry him off and see how it goes. I'm down here. Why is going down to the heater? Still here. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better. It's drying off. So what we're going to do now is continue again, uh, just bringing uh, the flesh back up. Just continue with that. Thin uh, colours again. That one. Just thin again. Clean my brush off. And once again, just picking up the water. The colour's gone off there, that paint's dried, so we touch more. Don't need a lot for this. I reckon a pot of paint is going to last you an absolute age. Just for figure painting. Some more water in. And we begin again. So that's that's about all we need to do with this guy for his skin tones. The next, I'll carry on with this, and the next bit we'll look at is just putting um, his clothes on. Just uh, painting up his clothes. So I'll get this done, get this dried, and maybe leave it, I'll leave it overnight, it's getting a little bit late here now. And I'll come back in the morning and we'll show you how to paint his trousers and his hat and his boots. Well his trousers at least, I think his boots will just get a coat of uh, black paint. Alright, I'll carry on with this and I'll see you in a moment again. Bye now. Right, we're back again. Um, I've finished the skin tones and I've gone on to uh, paint the uh, clothing on this little guy now. Uh, so we'll have a look at that and that should really take us to the end of painting this figure. Uh, right, over to the workbench. Cool. Here we are then, here he is. Uh, and you can really see now there was the original colour and that's his colour now. Uh, fetch him up a little bit. If it's the highlights are on him now. Still room for a little bit of a touch up. I'm trying to keep him in focus for you. Still room for a little bit of a touch up as uh, we need to, but we can always do that at a better place. The the, the cameras never really pick up. Um, they always tell lies, cameras, especially the colours. He looks a lot better in real life than he does on that <laughs> on there. Actually, he looks like he's got a bit of a suntan, but it's uh, yeah, I can assure you, it's actually all. Uh, all blended. Looks like he's got a suntan across his chest and his shoulders, but uh, it is all blended. It looks a lot better. Uh, his his clothing, right? Um, uniform grey for this. Uh, simple. Um, I think there's a couple of colours out there, but one I have found is the uh, army paint or war paints uh, in uniform grey. Uh, available from eBottles. Um, and these were an ideal match. Well, it certainly sets the base for it. Um, what I've done is I've gone over with uh, a wash, well, not so much a wash, a, th a sort of a, a thinned paint. Uh, because if you remember, we um, give him a coat in uh, black primer, and giving it a thin paint sort of um, 
so, sort of gives it I'm just going to try and adjust the focus a touch uh, it's a touch better um, give it a coat of uh, a thin paint give, with a black uh, primer gives it a sort of uh, appreciating similar to what you do on your, your aircraft your panel lines uh, so it already is done half of the work for you to pick up some of the detail in his clothing, uh, the creases and things. Uh, so what we're going to do now, we're trying to pick up those uh, creases a little bit more, just to give them a bit of definition. So what we've got for that, we've just got a touch of uh, black um, oil paint and some thinners just in here. And remember, just when we're doing a wash, we want uh, coloured thinner rather than thinned colour. So remember that's just on there like that and we get into here, put that out of the way so it doesn't cause too much flash on the camera. Uh, trying to find the right depth of field for the focus and just wash. Get it all down into those crevices around the backs of his pockets. This is just a real easy way of uh, picking up some of that detail. Uh, we've, what I've done there, unfortunately, what I've done there, I've uh, let a little bit of the oil just run up his braces, but uh, we'll leave it. We could probably try and polish it off in a moment with sort of the Q-tip. Now, if I wanted that to happen, it probably wouldn't. But never mind. This is live. This is live filming. I try to keep it in a shot as well. It's just that I really need to get a bit close to this so I sort of lose sense of where you are in relation to watching it. And so I'm just picking up some of the paint, uh, the oil, just washing it on, getting a Q-tip because I've put too much on there. Q-tip, oh, I'll be talking Adam Cheeves too much. Cotton buds, baby buds. There. there we are. Now, let's try again. Let's just try to find, uh, we come back again. Uh, the camera seems to be moving out of focus. There we go. It's a little bit dark now. It's dark in the grey down uh, a bit which is quite probably right uh, as he's uh, working on a, a grubby old submarine and living in the torpedo room. Uh, these guys once they went out they would maybe have the occasional shower uh, if they were on the surface and it was calm enough they'd rig up uh, a seawater shower maybe on the deck Maybe down below somewhere, but it certainly wouldn't be fresh water. Fresh water would be for uh, living on, a rare commodity. Just getting in there. And we'll see. That's it. That's about it. All it needs now, um, I'll just let that flash off, uh, dry off. It's going to take a little bit to do that. Uh, turn that off there. It's all right. The, the oils are good on his chest. Just give him that bit of a grubby look actually. Oh. Brush that off. Now what I'm going to do now is take some lighter um, grey in the same range the war pa um, army painter 
I'm going to take some ash grey and then when the oils have dried I'm just going to dry brush just the um, sort of upper surfaces of his creases uh, just to give them a bit of a highlight um, and it will enhance the shadows a little bit more just missed a little bit there so I'll leave that let that dry and then I can dry brush it and then I can get to work on his uh, buttons and his braces and the uh, emblem on his hat and we should have a guy that ends up like his mate this fella uh, his boots I've just give them a coat of matte black uh, I don't think they'd have shiny dress boots uh, not down in the bilges uh, painted his beard give his beard a little bit of a coat there um, painting hair in this scale it doesn't really matter um, but I think um, black um, if you were to paint his hair black um, I think that would be a bit too deep so I've given it this one um, a touch of grey in it that might be a bit like me really uh, grey hairs uh, and continue that down in his beard it just doesn't give it that falseness enough of it uh, but that's him um, if you can see his little bit of an emblem it's not perfect uh, it just gives it that um, it looks it looks right there we are in, in shot it looks right now these are really small these are 148 scale figures um, 135th scale you could spend a little bit more time on them uh, and get them colours all blended uh, but that wet blending seems to uh, certainly work in this it's the first time I've tried it uh, and it certainly worked just building up the colours come back just building up the colours of the skin tones and leaving the shadows and the depths sort of below uh, and get that so there's a little bit of work left to do on this guy I'm sorry it's been a little bit sort of difficult to see hopefully you get the right idea uh, we're going to go back and forth so I've got two of these guys now so I'll decide which one I'm going to use on the submarine I don't I don't want twins on the boat somebody will point it out if they're far enough apart never mind okay Right, that's figure painting done. Uh, I'll do a little bit more on the submarine now. I'll get that back together. I'll get the next part of it together. And uh, we'll get on with that. So I'll go finish the guy. Uh, and then put them away in the, the little box until they're ready to be uh, assigned to the submarine. Okay, that's that bit done. Because it is really a bit... Yeah, sorry about that. It really, yeah, the focus is it's getting it close enough to show you. No, nope, it's not going to come into focus for there. No, it's not. Sorry. See you in a moment. Ah, right. Welcome back. Um, I do apologise for that little bit of um, sort of out of focus and sort of can't see things uh, but hopefully it's given you an idea of how to paint the figures. Um, right, uh, we're moving on from one difficult um, item to uh, video to another difficult item to video although I, I won't really labour this point. Um, I'm just going to have a look at some of the equipment now that goes on the, uh, the bulkheads in the sauna and uh, radio rooms. Uh, so we'll go across to the bench and we'll see what we're doing. All right, I'll find the button. There we go. Uh, right, here we are. Uh, we're going to do some uh, decals on the uh, equipment. Um, now, because there's so much of it, I've thought I would try and leave it on the sprues um, and sort of 
add the decals on until then and then when I cut them off the, uh, the sprues there's that flashing again it does it when the fingers come in uh, when I take them off the sprues I'll just touch up the edges of them with the uh, paint uh, now these have been painted in the colours as required um, and then given a coat of uh, gloss um, gloss varnish uh, I use the Alclad uh, clear coat for this um, and then it's just a matter of picking out the sizes you can see here I'm going to do this piece that's in the uh, I think it's a radio room maybe part of the communicate of obviously part of the communication equipment um, now I'm not going to labor this because I'm sure that you'll know how to um, apply the decals uh, it's, it's just uh, a really a way of showing you um, sort of what happens because according to the book according to the paint call out this is a piece of equipment we're working on according to the book uh, we there are three parts of it as well as the decals that go on uh, there's three parts of it that are painted uh, in H H18 which is I think it's black metal, metal black um, yeah metal black H18 uh, so we'll have a go at getting these on um, and see how we go we'll just do this bit just for um, a little bit now what, what do we need obviously uh, some water water cotton buds tweezers as delicate as you can get them something to cut the decals out with making a noise I'll make a noise here just by, as I'm by the microphone there we go um, some microsol microsol number two I've got the second one uh, I don't think we'll uh, need the uh, micro set for it and now we need to find the right one it looks like uh, there are four different decals here uh, one two three four there one or two one or one one or two one or three and one hundred so we'll have a look at number one hundred ah it's just on there the tiniest of spots so what I do I'd probably something like this I'd cut it as close as possible to the decal itself just being careful not to slice into anything else I think I'm ready for a new blade on my scalpel at the moment Take that one off there and I've left purposely left that little bit there see see I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at this on the monitor at the moment and it's really tiny it's going to be difficult to see that's why I'm not going to labor the point I've already stretched your eyes enough out of focus and such to get the, the figure painting done so we'll just drop that in there it tepid water I find it works a little bit quicker some people say to use um, washing up liquid or anything like that but um, yeah you could do it, it just softens the glue a little bit quicker I think but I think these are fairly good enough anyway that uh, it wouldn't need anything extra in the water uh, just really just try it and see if we get booze yeah there we go and checking that we've got everything the right way up that goes on there yeah. hooray we've got that one on just a little dab try not to move it just a dab with uh, a cotton bud just to leave it it already seems to be settling down and that's my up oh, of my phone and computer bleeping uh, yeah right sorry about that I'll just turn the sound off hopefully it will bleep again um, just then a little bit of I always 
excuse me, rattling about in the background while I find a paintbrush to put the microsol on. Just a touch. And leave it. That's it. We all know how to put decals on. Uh, just that in this model, well certainly in the radio room, there's lots, radio and sonar room, there's lots to do. Uh, you see, it is, it's the reflection of the light that the pack camera picks up and it flashes trying to get the white balance back into uh, into balance again. I think that's what's doing it. I must try and investigate further and try and solve that problem for you. If you've any ideas, let me know. Uh, right, th yeah, there it goes again. Right, before it flashes again, there's the first decal. And down here we've got some, I think this is part of the sonar equipment. I haven't got my pointy stick, so I'll use a pointy paintbrush. Uh, right, I'll have a go at that. And I'll go and answer these mails that are coming through on my computer at the moment. And we'll see you uh, shortly for uh, another bit. Oh, this was a short bit. See you in a moment. Oh, welcome back. Um, yeah, you've caught me at a moment. Uh, the bench is in total disarray as I'm starting, um, well, finishing off painting all the, uh, the, the fiddly bits. The, there's so much to do in this submarine. There's so much details that need painting that you tend to forget and you sort of get yourself behind because uh, you think, right, I'll put that lot... Well, I, the way I plan these videos is, right, in the next segment, I'll put all that together, uh, I'll glue all this, and I'll do all this, and I'll show them that, and then you think, crikey, I haven't painted it yet, or there's bits that need painting. Um, but I've done all the decals, and they've all gone on. Um, come, come across and have a look. We'll find the uh, the right button. Uh, right, we've got the, the decals on. You can see in some of the parts in there, the, the, the decals have gone on. Um, one of the reasons I did leave it on the sprue as well because then I knew where everything was going to go and I could also cross-reference it in the plan and the uh, call-out uh, charts as to where all the correct uh, decals go and you probably can't see the detail on here but they are pretty good um, and it certainly saves um, a lot of painting uh, putting all the dots on the radio sets and the receivers uh, and everything else. Um, yep, you can't really see it, but yeah, it's it's done there. Um, and then I've gone on and added some parts to the the bulkheads. Uh, this is the watertight. Um, I think it's a forward bulkhead for the uh, officers' quarters into the control room from here. Go through this watertight door here into the control room as opposed to the other side which is over here somewhere. I uh, haven't done any work on that one yet. Get that to come in. I haven't still got work to do on that. Um, see here the equipment's gone on. I've highlighted some of the cable runs and such like that and I'm just going to use some of the um, oil brusher Starship Filth to trying to get this so the white balance doesn't pick it or uh, picks it up properly uh, I'm going to highlight some of this around here and obviously use a bit of an oil wash not too much as we saw on the torpedo room I'll do a, a bit of an oil wash around the bulkhead just to take that brightness off the uh, the grey paint and it's shining a bit on that but what I'm doing at the moment I'm doing the um, the officers um, sort of personnel, uh, personal uh, lockers uh, that are behind the bunks. Uh, they all go in this bit here. They'll be behind the bunks. These are the bunk bases. And all I'm doing is just applying the oil brush to two sides. Let's see if I can get it just a little bit in focus, a, bit, a little bit better in focus for you. Uh, I think, yeah, I'll try that there. It's not an automatic focus on this camera and it gets, uh, it's, it's a bit of a pain. Right, all I'm doing, I'm not going all round the, um, the, the linings. Uh, I'm just picking out some of the lines on here, doing sort of like a panel line wash. Now, the, as you know, the airbrushes, airbrushes are, are thinned already. 
uh, but I'm just going around two sides and then to make it run I just take some thinners on a brush and just touch it onto the paint and just move it around a bit and they will they will run so it's just it just defines the um, the lockers it does say in the um, color chart to actually paint the locker doors a slightly different brown um, but I think I think if you do this to it and you don't need to go to all that you can just uh, do some panel line washes and highlight them that way that's all I did uh, with the um, torpedo room ones there's some bunks in the torpedo room as you saw uh, just picking out the detail on this door here there's a pretty good the oil brushes are pretty good uh, you don't need to mess about uh, taking the oils you know putting your oil paint onto a card getting the oils to come out and then using the oil and then you know if you don't use all your oil uh, does it get wasted? I've heard that you can um, put some cling film over it and put it in the fridge. That may work. However, if it would uh, please the significant other when the fridge is full of different colour of oils. I know I keep my um, super glue. Super glue? Where's it at? Super glue. It's in the fridge. That's where I keep the super glue. Uh, a profession that I used to be in. Uh, super glue is used a lot in forensic science and they keep their super glue in the fridge. So if it's good enough for them. Hope you can see this. I'm just trying to sort of show you as we go along. I thought I'd drag you over and show you where we're up to. See we could just by brushing it along, try to keep it here, try to keep it where you can see it without it looking like it's going out of focus. And just touch the colours around, just spread them around with the uh, thinners. And then give it five, five minutes to dry. And we'll go over, go over it with a Q-tip, just like this. Go back to the door. Just a Q-tip, just not soaking in thinners, but you know the routine. And also, what I do find with this, um, because it's a Starship filter, if you just drag the excess, don't clean it all off, but drag the excess around the paintwork, and it tones it down a little bit. And a little bit of grubbiness to it, so we've got what we've got there. See it in there. Right, time to put some things together. Uh, there's the skipper's uh, desk and such done. I think what I'm going to do is the on here, you can't really see them. Um, it is a bit of a bind doing it in 148 because you can't see things. I must try and uh, readjust these cameras so you can try and see them. Uh, the skipper's uh, lockers and his desk, I'll sort of highlight some of that in there. And uh, same with the personal lockers on the other side, I'll do some highlights. And then it all goes together really. Uh, uh, that's about going to be it. All these parts are going to come off the spruce and they're going to stick uh, on the bulkheads. Uh, you really need to get your head around where everything is going to go and stick it all together. Then we'll tie it all together, we'll put it all together, tie it all in with some weathering and we won't be far off done. Right I'll go and get this done because there's lots to do and I'm conscious that you've been waiting ages for this video to come out and finally now you're watching it you finally get to see it. Um, I've just picked up the wrong brush. That's the one I want. Right because it's got just dinners on it. 
Right, I'm going to get this done before, while I can think about it, get it done, start to get it together, we'll come back and we'll have a look at some tying it all together, some weathering, I'm cracking we're getting towards, yeah, we won't have much time left in this video before we're on to the next one. Right, I better get things done and get this video and get it out to you. Right, see you in a moment. All right, welcome back. Now, since uh, we've uh, done the figure painting, and I do apologise for the little uh, graininess or the out of focus shots for the, the figure painting, um, I thought I'd move seamlessly on into a transition where I could show you um, the building uh, and the final putting together of the officers' quarters, uh, the sonar and the transmitter room. Um, however, I found that it wasn't as easy as I first thought. Um, not so much as it was a difficult build, it was just there was that much in it. Um, I kept thinking, right, I'll do a bit of filming now and I'll show them this bit. And then I've realised, no, I need to paint that bit first before I can do that. And then I need to do that before I can paint that. So it's all sort of, it would have been chopping and changing and you'd have been, see you all later, lots of times. Uh, so I'd rather I'd got it all done and then we can get sort of cracked on uh, getting it all together. I can show you how it goes together because you, I'm sure you were quite adept enough for uh, sticking, uh, gluing things together uh, and appreciate that uh, the bits I'll show you in a moment how they have all gone together. But what we're going to look at now is uh, finish, uh, finishing all off the painting uh, and uh, tying it all together with the weathering. Uh, so we'll go across to the workbench and we'll have a look. We'll come down here. All right, we'll go over there, press that button there. So you... Right, here we are. Here's the um, officer's quarters, sort of partly built, nearly finished. Um, what I've done, I've put it all together. Just It just goes together the same as you'd seen in the previous video uh, for the torpedo room. Um, uh, I've still got the, the desk, uh, the table top to paint on that side yet there. Uh, but I put all the decals on and all the equipment has gone together and it's all gone in there. Uh, you can see over here if you can get the light on it enough it's gonna be getting a bit dark and gloomy now uh, but you can see the uh, what I take to be the skipper's bunk here and some of his second in command first officer uh, things like that I would assume their bunks are there as well now the toilet here we have the toilet including um, including point your stick the toilet roll there oh, I can't get it right there the toilet roll uh, everything is accounted for in this little uh, submarine uh, I was planning uh, if you've been watching the live streams and keeping up uh, on uh, Facebook with us I was planning to put a little chap uh, one of the guys that we painted earlier I was planning to put him in there like that I thought it would be a little bit of fun and uh, so you could see him uh, reading or doing whatever on the toilet as it goes through there but uh, when it gets all together when I put it all together and because the watertight bulkhead goes on and on here we have a sink and a water pump when that goes on in there unfortunately it doesn't leave enough room to get the guy in so I think we'll have to rethink that plan and do something else. Uh, so right, what we're going to do now is we're going to just finish this little bit off and tie it all together. And I'm trying to do this so that it's not glaring on the screen all the time. Um, just propping it up a little bit there, a little pot of paint just to prop it up. Now what I'm going to do um, with the deck is give it a bit of a wash because I've sprayed it in uh, a metallic, uh, I think, gun metal. Just, just try to find the right colour. Yeah, I sprayed it in um, Videro uh, gunmetal gun metal grey. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to uh, bring the uh, the deck back from its shine a little bit by adding some of AK Interactive. Uh, it's an exhaust wash. It gives a browny sort of wash um, to the uh, to the area. Um, now I'm going to put a bit of tissue down here because I'm trying not to uh, spoil my nice clean shiny 
um, work surface because this is so that you can see all that goes on. So we take this and how do we apply it? Well we apply it with an oldish brush just lightly. Now I have to be careful that I don't knock this over and then just it's a wash so we can just wash it on. It's an enamel wash and then before it dries hopefully this is going to work if not it's going to be a disaster. We can just rub it out. We could have thought we can of course thin it with some thinners but it's already thinned in the bottle. I thought rather than making my own wash myself yeah, which is quite easy to do just thin down some in, uh, oil paints in your thinners but as this one's already made and we can use it throughout the board um, it will be a consistent colour so we can rub that off as well so what it's doing it, it, there's a tread plate on the deck uh, just a few cotton buds just for where we can't reach And we're just rubbing it off the tops of the checker plate. I knew I should have left that table off. All right. I'll paint the top of that shortly. And we can continue just getting in here. And it sort of adds to the grime and grubbiness of the submarine. The the woodwork itself, you can see it's a little bit dark uh, because the woodwork itself has already been weathered and I've given that um, just a, a, a gunk wash, uh, just an oil, uh, an oil wash, thinned oil wash. I haven't done it with the same colour as this because it was already brown. I, I give it a, a black oil wash which is also picked out, if you'd seen there, picked out the panel lines in the lockers. So we'll continue with this. Yeah, now people are, are, are asking am I, how am I going to weather the inside? Other than about this much, I'm not going to do any more. Um, once we get to the engine room, uh, things like that, things will start to become oily and uh, things like that. But the crew's living quarters, um, the torpedo room, this room here, there's an aft uh, sleeping quarters in the uh, rear torpedo room as well. Um, the guys, when they had nothing else to do, uh, I've been reading books, uh, I've been reading sort of... Uh, Battle of the Atlantic, which is a BBC f uh, a book of the BBC series, Battle of the Atlantic. Um, seems like when they had nothing to do, they were out polishing and cleaning. So I'm assuming that things weren't going to really get that grubby. Yeah, that have got grubby, uh, that have got damp. Uh, damp clothing, things like that, uh, will have been sort of hung around to dry, uh, and otherwise things would be pretty clean. Um, so I'm led to believe that's my excuse. That's why I'm not going to weather too much. If you could see, we're giving it um, a sort of a an area where, if we walk, if you're walking constantly along. Bits of the checker plate will be cleaner than other places. So we can create a wear sort of path. Well, I can work on that and that goes in there. Right. Going in there. Let's bring it back into focus. There we go. 
so instantly with just with this wash just you can as I say you can make your own washes uh, just with some oils and thinners but I had this in stock and it's the right sort of color uh, so why not use it uh, we can put a little bit in the toilet as well bearing in mind though that once the top goes on we're not going to see very much of this So that just, as you see, as you see from before, that has now taken that shine off it. And we're almost at the stage now where we can put the top back on. Uh, right. Okay, right, um, that's just really all we're going to do to tie it all in. Uh, there's a few things that have gone in that um, are extra. This piece here, um, I think it's a cable run uh, representing cables. I've given that a grey green, um, black grey type colour, sort of a tyre tire black, um, just to represent the rubber covered cables uh, they would have been uh, rubber covered in them tears uh, there is another one as well um, why I can't find it now where's it gone here it is when this is on the sprue this one on the sprue I forget which part this is I'll tell you in a moment this is L11 Lima 11 and when it's on the sprue it's very fragile in fact it has been snapped this one uh, and that goes across the top in there, somewhere like that. And I can't really see any way of supporting this. I would have thought it would have gone on some cable hangers, um, but they have not been represented in this. It's a bit of a difficult way to show you this. But that goes in there. That goes under there, and just to lock it up there. So. Everything's dark now. What a dingy place these submarines must have been. Right, um, we're on the home straight uh, for this bit. Uh, we can start and put the rest of it together. Uh, one thing I did, uh, I did want to point out as well, on this end, in this uh, like locker area here, um, it does say to install on uh, can't find it, lost it, bulkhead, here's a watertight bulkhead, it does say to install that cupboard on there, um, part 6, L6, onto that, onto that bulkhead and then it goes in there, in that cupboard and You'll never see it, so I can't. I can't see a point. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing it. Um, I wouldn't bother painting it, cutting off the sprue, so I wouldn't bother doing it. Uh, so there, you can see on this one all the bits and pieces and all the tiny decals that have gone on. That's what's taken a lot of time, uh, putting all the decals on and doing all the painting, chasing up all these cables on here uh, for paint and such like that. Uh, right. Um, yeah. Let's move on and have a look at another piece and then we can put it all together. I think we'll have a look at how we're going to do the lighting on the uh, the deck head. How we're going to get the lighting in. Alright, I'll go and get that bit done and I'll try and sort something out uh, so you can see it better. Right, see you in a moment. Look at paint everywhere. Oh right, well welcome back. I had a bit of a change of view. I'm going to try the camera here. It might be a bit shaky because it's on the bench, so like that. So if I press the bench, it might shake a little. But I'll sort that out. Hopefully, you're getting a better view now. Um, and I'll just finish off this last bit by showing you the officers' quarters. I've shifted the table by the well, it actually fell off. Never mind. Um, there, the officers' quarters. As you can see, with the oil wash in there, it, it uh, picked out the. Um, sort of panel lines on the cupboards on the on the wardrobes 
there in there we have the uh, radio equipment a uh, little microphone just in there if we could just pick it out get the right angle on it that's that in there and the transmitter room and all around the deck uh, all around the compartment skipper's bed everything else and you see there you, better, you get a better view now of where the wash has uh, worked its wonders on the floor that's all we're going to do that's all we're going to need for that um, so we can put that to one side now uh, get ready for putting it all together and the next bit will be uh, this it's the uh, deck head the bit above uh, bring it back it's the bit that goes in there like that and closes it all down in there um, what we're going to do now you can see here um, just in there uh, the original light fittings so what we're going to do now is um, put the um, LED lights in uh, we saw these right at the start of the program I've got some others that are coming for the next section um, uh, there are like the same sort of thing miniature uh, miniature LEDs uh, but uh, the next ones are a little bit different and I'll show you that when uh, we get to it now the way I've decided to do this if you look on the back here you'll see that Trumpeter have kindly provided us with um, positions to drill for putting actual lights in as I said maybe it's uh, a case of Trumpeter have decided that they'll bring out a lighting kit for this or maybe somebody else will but they've kindly marked in there uh, the lights for us now we're not going to need a particularly big hole for these lights so what I'm going to try and do is where the light is there I'm going to try and drill just behind it just in here uh, so I can put the light in and it's still hidden behind the original fitting so that's where the light is there uh, just with a, a pin vise I think I'm using a 1.6 mil drill uh, just drill out a nice hole that will take the fitting just feeling underneath so that we don't sort of tr drill through the light itself we're drilling behind it remember uh, and it's very close drill from the other side just in there may look as though this one is actually going to fall off but never mind we'll drill it then just enlarging the hole just a little bit with a pin vise and you can see here how such a tiny hole if I can pick the, f the fitting the light up oh, it's there and we can hide that behind there now what we're going to do is I'm going to fill the hole uh, with some uh, model filler I have some milliput around here somewhere I'm just going to fill it with um, a touch of filler because <clears throat> if we leave it like that if we leave the hole in there when the lights are switched on the the light itself will bounce back through the hole uh, so we don't want that to happen um, I did think of putting it in with a hot glue gun something like that uh, but that would leave us a little bit of a um, because it's um, silicon or rubbery it wouldn't take the paint so um, I think a bit of filler uh, just in there just to hold the light in and we are done so that's that one let's get on with the next one do the next one the same Yeah, it's coming through the right place this time. See that? Just if we can get it in. See moving there just behind the light fitting. I'll just and the final one. Once again, just behind the light fitting.
And when you're using a pin vise, let the pin vise do the work. Don't force it through. Let the drill do the work. Just slightly elongate it using the edge of the drill because it's soft plastic we can just elongate the hole a little bit ah, find some more lights now these are directional so remember what we want to do is sort of I would actually point them towards the back of the boat I'll try just so they're not glaring forward. And the third one. I'm going to leave the cables loose at the moment uh, until we get it all together and I can find a proper um, route for the cables. I think that's the right way around. I think we're looking at it that way. That's right. So what I'm planning to do is is run all the cables to the centre of the boat and then down uh, hopefully around the back of the uh, these uh, compartments and then I'm hoping that if the plans are right the uh, the cables will run down into the stand uh, on the boat where I can put a switch and the batteries and everything can be hidden but see already there the lights are in we just held them on and we can hardly see them but we will see them from the top if we don't fill these holes in so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to go and fix some milliput together uh, get them in and then we can I think we're about ready to put the whole thing together all right see you in a moment hope this view's a little bit better now okay bye Okay, welcome back. Um, right, we're on to the final stretch now. Um, this um, compartment seems to have taken an absolute age to get done, uh, just um, because of all the detail painting and can't move on to the next step because I need to paint some detail and then glue it together uh, and then do bits and pieces so it can get across and filmed for yourself. Um, but yeah, we're on the final leg. Um, and it's just a matter now of uh, putting it all together and seeing what it looks like. Um, it looks like it's going together uh, fairly simply, um, but let's get across to the uh, workbench and uh, see what we can have a look at. Okay. Right, here we are. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put all this together. Uh, I've got most of the parts here on the bench, as hopefully you can see. Um, just needs a matter of uh, remembering to read the instructions where it says here install it first uh, right so uh, let's get on a little bit and have a look uh, I'm just gonna put this to one side so I can refer to it um, right um, unless there's anything remarkable I'll just crack on and get this done um, I'll press the f back see, see how the camera bounces right I'll press the fast forward button uh, so that you're not sitting watching ages of gluing together and things like that and uh, we'll make a start right here goes
Okay, right, um, it's going together. I um, had a little bit of a problem just fitting the uh, battery boxes onto the underneath of the uh, deck. Uh, just uh, took a little bit of messing, just took a little bit of time up to there. Um, but the rest of it seems to be going together okay now. Uh, that's the main bits done. Uh, this is the bit I've still got to paint. Uh, and that goes in there like that somehow. I'll work it out in a moment. Just say it goes in. Yeah, wider part to there. I'll work it out. I think it goes in like that. I'll work it out and then I can paint it. Uh, but just be careful if you're getting to this stage, if you are building it, uh, one or two things are a little bit tight and sometimes the thickness of a layer of paint uh, makes a difference to the fit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this now, uh, I'll leave it up like that and give the paint, a ch uh, the, the paint, the glue a chance to uh, dry off and then we can get and work on the top section. All right, see you in a moment. Oh well, welcome back. This, um, it probably looks a little bit strange now. Um, I've gone, um, I put on the, a, a few of the pieces while I was waiting for the glue to dry as, it, as we stood it up. Uh, I've done, um, I've done the, um, what I take it to be, uh, air conditioning fence, uh, sort of uh, air circulation sort of trunking here. Uh, the cables have gone in that I, uh, talked about before that I would have probably thought they would have been on uh, cable hangers uh, and the end of the cable running atop, running across the top here uh, above above the bunks. Uh, as I say it looks a little bit strange uh, in this angle uh, but hopefully all will become apparent uh, shortly. Right so we can still leave it in this angle uh, because now what we're going to do is put uh, the bit that says install first, which is uh, the deck head. Uh, this is uh, the bit that goes in here. Uh, you can see I've, uh, as I discussed uh, on the last bit, that I've held the, the lighting cables in with some milliput, And I've just uh, held the cables in place at the moment uh, with some masking tape just to keep them out of the way. Now there's only one way that can go in because the locating lugs on the end here uh, will only fit in one direction. Uh, so hopefully we'll get it right. So this bit goes in here like this. And then this is where it's going to sort of struggle. I'm not going to try, I'm not going to glue that yet because I'm going to have a go. At dry fitting the other bulkhead. Uh, this bit goes in here like this. Now, you know, I, might have, I might have to excuse me a moment as I get my head in and try and I haven't done this yet, I haven't done it before, I haven't done a dry fit so I'm going to try and get this in here and have a look to see where it all fits. It may have to come out again Mm. Yes, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle. Get that in there. Right, there's going to be a little bit of swearing and cursing in this next bit because I can't see how all this trunking and this cable all go in there without too much swearing going on. Especially if this bit's got to go in first. Now I would think the best way to do it is going to be to glue and set this deck head in 
and then we can turn the compartment over and work on getting uh, the trunking and the pipe work in uh, the cables so I think that's the way forward and that's got to go on there like that so what we need to do is then just take that just move that little piece of masking tape there Put that onto there, that onto there. It should match up with the bulkhead at the back. Right, sorry my hands are in the way. I'm trying to get this all in. See, I, see get the idea? Right, to the glue. I'm getting a bit low on glue. Need to put another order in. Of glue in here just to hold it. I'm not going to glue it because if it needs to come apart again I can hopefully do it a little bit easier. I don't think it'll need to come apart but I don't want to fully glue it I just want to tack it down uh, while the glue sets. So it's just a matter of holding things because it's being round it's a little bit of a difficult shape to clamp. I could put some tape on I guess but I've started to glue it now and I've got nothing to hand. There we go. Just need to hold it. Ah, right you go watch some windmills going around for a moment and I'll uh, get this done. See you in a moment. All right, that um, bulkhead I think is dry enough now, um, so we can have a go at getting uh, the really, really the final piece on it. This bit, uh, the bulkhead from the uh, officers' quarters to the torpedo room. Um, I've, I have had a go at this one um, and a little bit of a trial, and I still don't know if it'll go right on camera. Here we go, we'll have a try. Okay, I figured the best way to do it would be to uh, place the bulkhead on there and then turn the whole thing over and locate everything one at a time. Now, if um, you've got everything lined up it should, should he says, go into place fairly easily. I'm just looking for a pair of tweezers just to move things around on the inside in here. And that cable This cable here does seem rather flimsy. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to try and move that about too much because I guarantee that I'll break it. Uh, just trying to get this trunking in now. This this trunking here goes into some slots on the bulkhead just inside but it leaves the cable in the way and as I say the cable is a little bit flimsy and I don't want to bend it. Sorry if you can't see this I'm just struggling to get it in. 
Yeah, it's fallen out. See? And it was glued in. Let's see if we could relocate it. Just try to find the lights. Right, that goes in there. So a touch of glue back on the end and I'll try and relocate it to the bulkhead which is now glued at the other end. Ah, I did say that there would be some swearing and cursing in this uh, episode. Uh, more windmills. Okay, back again. Let's have another go at this. Um, I got the cable back in uh, with use of a torch, uh, a long brush for glue, uh, and lots of swearing. Uh, but it's a family show, so I can't show that. So, right. Um, let's have another go. As I say, the best way to do it, I think, is to tip everything up and put it on here, and then hopefully everything will line up and this should be the last part for this uh, right here we go again otherwise it's uh, back to the windmills but never mind here we go so far so good it's, once again it's just about the keeping that cable run out of the way Um, hopefully it's not going to be forced so we can just allow everything to drop in place. I can feel things dropping into place apart from the bits that I want which are these vent pipes and the cable And I think we must have it. Uh, see in there. I think we've got it all in apart from that cable, which needs to drop in a little slot just in there. Ah. Not quite. Nearly, but not quite. Excuse me, you won't see this bit as I try to get these in.
Do you know what? I think if I was doing this again, I would start at this end and do it and put this one on last. That way, if things aren't quite lined up, uh, if things aren't quite lined up, you're not actually going to see them uh, because it'll be hidden uh, behind the uh, the bulkheads inside. We see how it's all coming together. That wibbly wobbly cable there needs to be sorted out uh, and put into place. The vents in there, see there's just a little bit of a gap that needs to close up. That's what I say, if there is a little bit of a gap it could go together at that end. But then again if you put it on, if you put this end on first you wouldn't see everything lining up. Ah, difficult. I think it's just going to try my patience. Um, and I think the best thing to do is, rather than fight with it, uh, I'll just put it to one side, go and have a brew, come back and do it, and then we'll come back and finish everything off. All right? I think that's a good enough idea. Otherwise, you're just going to hear me swear and you won't like that. See you in a moment. Oh, well. That was a struggle of epic proportions. Um, lots of tea, stroop waffles, swearing, but eventually it's gone together. Still a little bit of touch up to do, things like such uh, painting, uh, a bit of painting to catch up and things like that. But otherwise, this one is done. Thank heavens. It's been an epic, this build, because obviously I've uh, been doing other things as well. Um, the live streams and such like that. Um, but this bit's gone together. I've ruined my mat. Broke my knife. Tear, torn my hair out. But it's gone. Um, and we can have a look now. Um, I've got it lined up and I've got the lights all sorted. So... Let's have a drum roll. I won't bang on the bench because it wobbles the camera. Let's have a look. There. See what a difference. See how the lights have made a difference in there. Let's fetch it up so you can see it. Toilet's still in darkness, unfortunately. But, yeah, don't need a light if you go in the loo if you know what you're doing. Uh, skipper's bed. And there's, for all the detail that's in there, there is a lot of it you can't see. Um, as before, on the torpedo room, um, there's still rooms, there's still packs of room for uh, adding extra detail. Uh, let's bring the two together. I'll turn this off before I short everything out. And we'll see how it's grown. So here's the torpedo room that we saw in the first part, first and second part. There's cables hanging out of it because I'm still working on the um, lighting to go in there. And up. There. It goes together. Uh, it looks like a ray gun now, doesn't it? Uh, I'll get it all lit up and take a few pictures uh, to add on to the end of the video. But ah, that's it done. Hopefully the next part, which is the control room, I'll put these down because I can't seem to hold them. Um, hopefully next part, which is the control room, isn't going to take as long, I hope. There's lots of detail in that as well. Um, there's a little bit different lighting to do. Uh, with the same lighting, I've just got a little bit of a, um, uh, a different way of doing it. Well, not a different way of doing it. I've got some different lights for the control room, and I'll show you them in the next video. Uh, but that's all for me from this um, epic uh, video. I'm sorry it's taken so long to get out, but we've had bags of other stuff. Got a new job, uh, got the live streams going up and running. I've uh, been waiting for some bits and pieces to come for the lighting, but eventually it's all come together. Uh, so that's the end of part three. Um, that's me, uh, finished for this one. That's Ted at uh, ebottles.co.uk. That's them down, down here. 
there. Um, and if you want to catch up on the bills, come across and see me on my Facebook page at uh, Skipper's Scale Models. Uh, also have a look at a uh, Facebook page for e-models of guys themselves. Um, and if you're doing any bills, uh, got an e-model sticker or anything like that, let's have some pictures there. Let's put it onto the uh, Facebook page and share with everybody. Uh, but as I mentioned, the live streams, if you don't know about them on a Monday night, uh, round about nine o'clock. And as I speak, it's uh, British summertime now. So nine o'clock, British summertime. Uh, join me and Fox Wolf for some light-hearted chat banter. Um, we do try to fit a bit of uh, modelling uh, gossip and talk in, uh, but mainly we'll just uh, chatter on and hopefully you can join us for that and joining the chat. Uh, there's occasionally some giveaways, there's a great sticker giveaway, um, uh, but we're glad to see you there. So that's everything. Uh, that's all for tonight and I'm really glad this video's finished now and I can get cracked on with the next one um, and hopefully we get the sort of thing growing now. But thanks a lot for watching, thanks for joining and um, we'll see you all again. Hopefully we'll see you on the live stream. Uh, remember, get yourself along to eModels, have a look on the website uh, If my and as my good friend Fox says, if they haven't got it, you probably don't need it. But if you do want it, drop them a line and they'll probably get it for you. All right. Bye now. Bye.